Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Lionel Rudeau and I cook vegan Provence dishes. Today we are making the king's cake or the galette des rois à la frangipane. It is also known as the galette parisienne. However, this cake doesn't originate from the region of Provence. In Provence, what we bake for the Epiphany is the Couronne des Rois and you can find my recipe at that link there. The difference is this cake is a puff pastry cake and the Couronne des Rois is the brioche. There are various recipes of Galette des Rois but this is the most authentic one. In all of France now, even in Provence, it is sold to commemorate the king's visit to the newborn Jesus Christ. A custom that dates back hundreds of years. A mix of almond cream and crème pâtissière is used in the filling, which is then baked in a puff pastry case. Without crème pâtissière, the cake is called the pitivier. This cake is a wonder. There is nothing quite like the richness, the delicateness and the fluff of this recipe. The reputation of this cake is worldwide and there is a reason for it. It's such a delicious dessert. Tradition is far from synonymous with immutability and archaism. Instead, tradition is what, while maintaining a link with the past, is created or recreated and anchored into the present. In my channel, I make you discover traditional French dishes that I have recreated without the use of animal products origins. They taste like the traditional one, but no cruelty involved. Let's look at the ingredients and the utensils you will need to make this recipe. Additionally, as always, I've included a list of ingredients and utensils in the description box. To realize this recipe, you will need the following ingredients. For the almond cream, you will need 100 grams of margarine or vegan butter, 80 grams of sugar, 100 grams of plant-based yogurt, preferably with a neutral taste, 125 grams of almond powder and 10 grams of all-purpose flour. For the custard, you will need 20 centiliters of plant-based milk of your choice, 20 grams of cornstarch, 30 grams of sugar. You will also need two sheets of puff pastry of 25 x 22 cm or bigger. For the glaze, you will need one tablespoon of sugar and two tablespoons of soy milk a small bowl filled with water, a cashew nut or an almond. You will also need the following utensils. A whisk, a fork, a sharp knife, a knife with a not too sharp blade, a skewer or a toothpick or the tip of the pointy knife, a paintbrush, a medium sized mixing bowl, a small sized mixing bowl, a small saucepan, a baking tray lined with parchment paper. To make the custard, start by mixing the cornstarch and the sugar in a small size bowl. Give them a quick mix. Then, pour the plant milk in the saucepan and bring it to the stove with the bowl of flour and sugar mix. Bring the milk to a boil on medium high heat. When the milk boils, stop the fire and pour half of the milk into the flour and sugar mix. Mix with the whisk until well combined and make sure there is no corn flour residues. Then pour the liquid dough you obtained back to the saucepan and restart the fire to medium high heat. Continue mixing until the liquid dough boils, then hardens and turns into a custard cream. That takes about only a few minutes. When the custard has reached that consistency, turn off the heat and set aside. To make the almond cream, 
pour the vegan butter into the medium sized salad bowl. Then add the sugar. Use a fork to combine the sugar with the vegan butter by breaking the butter into smaller bits. When the vegan butter has turned into a soft cream, add the yogurt. And mix until well combined. It might sound a bit repetitive, but mixing each ingredient together before adding the next one will keep you from having lumps in the cream. When they are all well combined, you can add the almond powder. Continue mixing until they're well combined and form an homogeneous cream. Finally, add the flour and give a final mix. Then, add the custard to the almond cream and mix with the whisk until well combined. To cut the puff pastry, use a plate or a mixing bowl to cut circles into the puff pastry. You will need two circles of dough. I chose a bowl that had the diameter the closest to my puff pastry dimensions. Place the bowl on top of the dough and simply cut around the edges with the sharp knife. With the quantity of almond cream, you could go up to a 30 cm diameter cake. Discard the dough leftovers that you could bake with the cake and use them as toast to eat with cream cheese. You can find the recipe of my cream cheese in the information box. This is a perfect snack. Repeat the same operation with the other puff pastry sheet. To garnish the galette, spoon around 4 to 5 tablespoons of cream in the center of one of the dough circles, leaving a 2 to 3 cm gap on the edge. That gap will allow you to stick properly the second dough you will put on top. Let's have a bit of background history around the history of the galette. Galette means flat cake in French. The tradition comes from Saturnalia, a Roman festival celebrating the god Saturn and the sun. A meal was then shared between the masters and the slaves, and a bean was slipped into a cake whose round and golden aspect recalled the sun. That explained the color and the shape of the cake. For centuries now, Epiphany is a religious festival whose words come from the Greek Epiphaneia, which means appearance. The Epiphany represents the moment when the three kings arrived in Bethlehem, guided by the evening star. It was on this occasion that they then offered precious gifts to Jesus, Mary and Joseph as a sign of adoration of the Savior. The Galette des Rois is now a tradition that has gone beyond religious borders and which is an opportunity to meet up with family or friends. To ensure the random distribution of the slices of the cake, it is customary for the youngest to stand under the table and name the beneficiary of the slice who is designated by the person in charge of the service in order to elect the king of the table. Then prepare the brush and the recipient with water and wet the edges that you have left without cream. Then add the trinket. Here I use a cashew nut. Almonds are better though because they remain hard after baking. Cover the cashew nut with cream. Then cover with a second piece of puff pastry circle. Stretch it slightly and delicately to match the edges of the other dough circle. Press delicately for the edges to stick. Here is some background history around the meaning of the bean in the galette. In each of the galettes made, there is a bean or a trinket made out of porcelain which will be used to designate the king among the guests sharing the galette. Whoever found the bean has to pay for his rounds at the table. The first attestation of the sharing of a galette dates back to 1311 in the city of Amiens in France. Sharing the galette is truly an old tradition. Then press the fork teeth around the edges to ensure the two dough circles are perfectly sticked and there are no holes from where the cream could escape.
Transfer delicately the cake to the baking tray, layered with parchment paper. You could have chosen to do that step before applying the cream filling if you are afraid to damage your cake during the transfer. Apply the glaze all over the surface and let it set in the fridge for 15 minutes. Set your oven to 200 degrees Celsius and let it heat up. After the dough has spent 50 minutes in the fridge, apply another layer of glaze. Now you can start to scotch the surface of the cake using a knife that is not too sharp to draw motifs. If the knife is too sharp, you might cut and make holes into the dough. This is an optional step but it's purely for aesthetic. I like this curved line design. I start by drawing a line in each quarter of the circle and then I draw inside those quarters, in the middle, and so on. That will ensure you an equal distribution of the lines. Then pierce a hole with the skewers to let the steam come out when the cake will bake. By now your oven should have reached the 200 degree temperature. You can place the cake in the oven. After 10 minutes baking, reduce the temperature to 180 degrees Celsius and continue baking for another 15 to 20 minutes. The cake is ready when the surface turns golden brown, but it can easily become too dark, so watch out. Let the cake cool down completely, your galette des rois is ready. So this is a king's cake, and it's a cake that uh, is baked in France for the Epiphany. So the Epiphany is the day when the, uh, the mages, the roi mage, the kings, visit Jesus Christ. In Bethlehem. So, in Bethlehem. Um, inside the cake there is like a small, um, I put a little nut, and the person who gets the nut, uh, traditionally, normally has to pay for the meal. So if you're in a restaurant with people, then you get the la fève, so the little trinket, then you have to pay either way for the meal, or either way you pay for the next uh, galette. So you are crowned king or queen. So let's cut that cake. So the rich version in here means that there is like a crème pâtissière and there is also a crème made of almond that makes it the traditional original recipe. It's a puff pastry cake. Ladies first. Yeah. I can smell the deliciousness. Look at all the layers of pastry, the crust. Mmm, it's sweet, creamy, crusty. Like you, you can taste the softness of the filling. You have the teeth going through layers of the crust and it, it's like really crispy on the outside and then it gets softer as you go in and then it meets the soft filling in the middle and tastes wonderful and it's smooth and rich and the flavor of the almond oh such a delight it's so delicate and normally the the, the, the recipe that they, you, you will buy in stores in France, they don't put the, the crème pâtissière. So the crème pâtissière has another layer of smoothness and creaminess. Maybe there's some caramelization on the top. Yeah. Here. Yeah, that's the best part actually. There's caramelization here. How do you say that? Very good. Mm -hmm. It's not too sweet, it's just right. Mm.
I hope that you like this recipe and if you want to be notified when I publish new content, click the notification bell button below. Like, share and subscribe and add a comment if you feel like you. Your support is immensely appreciated and thank you for your kind messages. From now on, bye and I'll see you next time.